but I'm heading out to Hannibal, Missouri uh, because they're having a Little House cast reunion there on a riverboat and I just couldn't resist. And so I will see you somewhere around two and a half hours. Stopped in Mount Pleasant, Iowa to have lunch and it is now one o'clock. I am supposed to be hitting Hannibal a little after two and we're going to be heading to uh, a coffee shop there, Java something, uh, Java Jive, Jive Java, I don't know, something like that. And I want to talk about it a minute because I have found that at a lot of these organized events, especially things that are to some extent visiting in, like there's been you know, quite a few uh, four or five cast member events going around to different festivals, and they will have little reception things without telling you. And it's better, if you, especially if you're coming from a long ways, to just assume that there's going to be something um, going ahead of time. And today's thing is from 2 to 4. And I knew this because there was an email that came through either fairly late last night or early this morning, I don't remember which that said that they were going to be loading the boat from a different point and because there's been high waters and that they were going to have this meet and greet reception so watch for that if you're going to one of these events and even if they tell you no there isn't one try and block in some time if you possibly can or at least be aware that that's something that can happen few pictures of the cast at this event and mostly I tried to focus on Andy Garvey and baby Rose because I knew I didn't have pictures of them yet that I had taken and I knew I had pictures with Allison Armgram or Nellie and Charlotte Stewart or Miss Beetle and with Wendy Lou Lee. I just got back in the car the meet and greet was basically a line to um, get signatures. I did get baby Rose and Andy Garvey, which are, of course, the characters' names, but um, I will put that in the description what their real names are because I always screw up his last name. I do not present it correctly, and I want to make sure the first time I have him on my videos that I have the name right, so look down below. And uh, they had little booths there to buy stuff that is and they were also sign, are charging for autographs uh, there were some people who were surprised by that um, it didn't really used to be a thing in the little house sites and it tends to be more the more cast members there are the more common it is and with that I'm gonna see if I can find out where we get on the riverboat next here's the hotel and right here is the Tom Sawyer district. This our riverboat is going along there so you can see what it looks like from the outside. And right now the river is high so there's a lot of barges just sitting around. And that's because to get through the lock and dam system, the water has to be between a certain height and a certain height. And did I lose it? Where's that little place? Nope, there it is. Uh, between a certain height and a certain height. And if it gets off from those heights, it uh, won't. they can't get the barges through the locks. Uh, a lock, in case you do not know, uh, is sort of partially a dam 
and partially an elevator. To go up a lock, you pull into the bottom, they close the door behind you, they flood the little area you're in till you rise up to your even with the next part of the river. You go on through and they let the water out and the next person can come up. So it's sort of like a water elevator. And to go down a lock, it's basically the same thing. But if uh, there isn't enough water to fill it, or, well, to fill it, or if there's too much, then um, they will not be able to get the barges through. Now, this is an important thing to know if you're going to be doing one of these bigger group fan events, especially on a riverboat. Now, I had double, triple checked the time of the the start, and it said 6.30. So I assumed that meant the gates were opening at 6.30, and then people would come in and there'd be stuff starting and things like that. So I had checked into the hotel, uh, which is the best western on the river in Hannibal. Highly recommend because parking is terrible in Hannibal. Uh, and this has an attached lot for people staying there only. And I decided to walk to the landing, which I still think was a good idea, even though it rained on me both ways. It just was, it wasn't that far of a walk. The area was okay, and there really wasn't good parking at all. It was horrible parking. Yeah. Anyway, so... I had thought, well, I'll try and be there at 6, but I was working on a little something, and I didn't get done till 6, and I didn't stop, and I thought, okay, that'll be fine. So I walk over, and I get there about 6.10 or so, and you'll hear in a minute that they were hurrying me on because apparently there were just a few people left, and they will in just a little bit have some, uh, well, have Alice Narngram and um, whoever was the host, uh, on stage, kind of what they said, killing time till everybody gets here because we just have a few people left. So I take that to mean you were supposed to be there early, despite the fact it said 6.30 on the ticket. Now, I think that, I want to think that the write-up was unclear in any of the emails and any of the stuff I got because I swear it said 6.30, the one and only place it said a time except for the meet and greet thing earlier. But everybody else was there already. So I am going to strongly recommend that if you have one of these events that you're going to, that you show up early. And I have not done multiple events, so don't take this as, as the absolute answer. But if I was going to do it again, I would have started heading over at 5.30. The doors probably would have been closed when I was there, but I don't know that they would be, and that way you would get a chance to come in and sit down. And I ended up finding a spot near the stage because I was only one person and there was a couple that had the table, so it really worked out okay, except you were really crunched in there, not just at our table, but at all the tables. So get there early, stake out a good seat, and watch all the free stuff and check out their gift shop before you leave. And the gift shop wasn't open at all afterwards either. So, um, arrive early. It's raining. And the riverboat's on the other side of this. Apparently, this is their high-level uh, loading point. There is parking here, but I think I was wise to walk. And you'll notice the cars are parked right along the verge. I have the train comes through, they're gone. All right, here we go. This is the ticket office. Ooh, I like that mat. It looks like I just made it with tape. Note to self, make that with tape. All right. Oh. Also, helpful to take down your umbrella before you go in. Uh. 
All right, it says online customers check, check in at the counter. So, are you, do you got your ticket? I wanted to take a minute and tell you about the, um, how much you were, can assume to see of the cast if you go to an event like this. So, I should have come earlier, and I did not, but I did en end up with a seat fairly near the stage because there was a couple there. They were tables for four. Everybody was super squished, um, but since this couple was there at a lowness table, I got a seat there. Now, they were starting, I think, before the boat took off um, to go and get or have the cast work the room table to table. They seem to think that they're, they, well, the, I think their goal was to get every cast member to, or it was trying to get at least one cast member to every table and hopefully most of them. Now, they were working around and working it pretty well. Nobody came to our table precisely, but lots of them passed nearby uh, and were having conversations with people. So I don't think you can be guaranteed a chance to talk to anybody, but I think you will see them from a reasonably close distance during that part. They told us that the cast was also going to do that on the second floor. I was not on the second floor. I don't know whether they actually did. Then they had like a little show thing where they were talking about their experiences with the show and uh, doing just kind of short skit things. Um, not that they were making things up, but you know, short little speech things talking about considerable about what happened. Uh, they'd put multiple people up there at a time sometimes. You know, it was just a fairly short series of little stage event things. Then they opened up the um, serving line. They had everybody, or they had the stars go first. Now, this is just my opinion, but if it was up to me, I would have fed the stars before we left the dock, so they had more passing around time. They're, this is not the first event I've gone to that has handled it this way. Not a fan, but um, I think that is what's probably going to happen at this type of events. So they uh, have their food and are eating, and then they release the tables uh, as they go through. And I don't know if on the second floor they had their own line of food or if they had to come down, get their food, and then go up again. So having done that, they went ahead and, um, and after that they did a couple more show things. They did the auction, which was not really connected to the cast at all, though it was connected with the TV show. And then they started the cast signing and they had a table at the back and you could take your stuff up and stand in line and get your stuff signed. I think that is why they had the meet and greet thing there in the afternoon because they were hoping to get a lot of people through because they didn't leave a lot of time at all for people coming up and signing stuff on the boat. Just a few more that we're waiting on, so that's why we're up here. We're stalling. <laughs> so I thought there was like flood warnings, but we're already in the river and already on a boat. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe the water rises, we wind up like on someone's lawn. I'm not sure how that works, but I think we're quite safe in this. It's quite a heavy vehicle. We are quite safe. And one last thing, uh, you can see we had a musician playing uh, most of the time during the trip. Uh, there was also uh, another crew member that they had step up and sing a little bit. Here is a problem, and I'm not sure if it's an organizer problem or if it's a musician problem. And I really kind of think it's a musician problem. Because you're coming on this cruise not because you want to listen to this guy who's such a great musician, which normal people might be, that they think that's just a nice thing, but people were on this particular cruise to talk to people, 
if you can't talk to the cast, you at least want to talk to fans. And it was almost impossible to do because the music was so loud. And people are not there for a concert. I've noticed this a lot at conferences. If there is a band, they don't seem to get that people are there to talk and having a little background music, nice. Having a full-blown concert playing, not helpful. And that's really what this experience was, and I really think that that's probably how all dinner cruise things are. I want to say the guy was great, he was a very good musician, and he was the only one who stopped and asked if I needed a ride when I was walking home in the rain uh, afterwards, which I did not do. I was happy enough to walk it, but uh, it was super nice of him to ask. So he was a great guy, but honestly, if you're having an event where a big part of it is talking to people, don't try and do a concert. <laughs> most of this kind of trip food. I will say that I got a good piece of advice before I left the hotel that uh, they do not allow time for people to go back and get seconds. If you think you might want more of something, uh, just get a bigger serving the first time. It isn't that they run out of food, it's that they will immediately start to tear down as soon as everyone has gotten a chance to go through it once. And um, she wants everybody to remember that they came to the riverboat and that they sailed on the riverboat on the little house on the Prairie Cruise in Hannibal, Missouri on Mother's Day. On Thank Mother's you. Day. Isn't it beautiful? Have you been looking out the window? They had an auction of stuff from the show. I'm not sure where they got it. It was a little bit ragtag. But charity auctions are always good, and they said this was for charity. They didn't say what charity. When I out and out asked them, they said they weren't sure they thought Dean's bench. Dean Butler has been heading up a campaign to get a bench in honor of Michael Landon Dunn, but I think it's fully funded from what I could find online. So why they would be doing another charity thing, I don't know. And sort of the number one thing about a charity auction is you have to say what the charity is. And nobody did and nobody seemed to know. And people were just bidding on it because it was cool stuff. They also started it way late, and so they kind of had to rush. And if it was a charity auction, they didn't run it very well. 150. We're at 150 for Laura's costume. 150 for Laura's costume. Then no, I will sign for you. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, anybody. It's a good chance, guys. Okay, we're selling it. You won't find another one like it. Hundred dollars, right? Hundred dollars sold. Anybody? Come on, guys. We're selling it. Sold at one hundred dollars. What's the number? picture with our Little House cast members with the crew of the ship is the best picture I got of all of them all night. Uh, and I wanted to introduce you to who they are if you don't know, because I spent a lot of time telling people are. So going from the left, Patrick Laberto, who played Andy Garvey, who was... Um, Merlin Olson's son in the series, 
and Laura's best friends until the Edwards family came back. Uh, next is Jennifer Donati. And again, I might be mispronouncing that. And if so, I'm sorry. She was one of the twins who played Baby Rose. Baby Rose, when she was really just a baby for the movies, they uh, recast with a toddler. And it was just those... Uh, she was just one of the set of twins for when Baby Rose is actually a baby. And then is Wendy Lou Lee, who's one of the two twins who played Grace and has written a couple of books. And Charlotte Stewart, who played Miss Beetle, who is the school teacher. And then Allison Armgrim, who plays uh, Nellie Olson. And then not pictured because he ended up canceling for this particular trip was Dean Butler, who played Almanza Wilder. Now, those are the main people that you are going to see on uh, one of these cast reunions. There are definitely other people who do occasional ones. But if you really care about which cast members you're seeing, be sure to check a list before you go. And I think for some of the 50th reunions, you're going to see more people. Uh, but these are the core people who you will see the most of when you go to a Little House reunion event. Before I head out of Hannibal, that uh, Hannibal is kind of a restaurant row. If you're going along the bluff over the actual town, it... Um, they have a whole bunch of chain restaurants because these are tourists coming in. Uh, you know, I always say about Pepin is it has more good restaurants than any town with that population ought to be able to support. And they have more chain restaurants here than they should be able to support. And they have a lot of chains that we don't have. Uh, they've got Sonic, which we're supposed to be getting. Uh, and they had a Golden Crab. Just showing how me and Missouri go. Once again, I'm driving back from, uh, well, sort of south-ish, uh, well, from Missouri, and it is raining. And those of you watching my videos will remember my 2019 trip to Mansell, where I drove all the way in rain. Now, I actually have about two hours left. Uh, so I had the first hour rain free and now we're getting into the rain and it is 87 miles to Iowa City, home sweet home. And it said 39 miles to Mount Pleasant, which is the home of Midwest Old Thrashers. But uh, I'm going to be heading, I'll probably have lunch there. Just as an afterthought, uh, one thing that I did this weekend was I wore my Laura Ingalls Wilder engagement ring, which is the replica ring that the Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum in Walnut Grove puts out, and nobody said anything about it. So I wanted to show you that I did have it on the whole weekend because I love my Laura ring.